Welcome to our Resurrection Sunday morning worship. Welcome. Run with us toward the place of sorrow. Christ is risen. Shout the good news. Sing. Praise God, for the promise has been fulfilled. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Christ is risen. He is risen
Please remain standing for our resurrection dialogue. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Indeed, alleluia. Worthy is Christ, the lamb who was slain. Alleluia. Rejoice then, even in your distress. We shall be found worthy when Christ appears. God has claimed us as his own. God has called us from our darkness into the light of the day. Alleluia. Christ is risen. I now invite our ushers to come forward and get our offering for the work of God in this church and community. Thank you. 
us pray. Mighty God of resurrection and redemption, we offer our gifts alongside our hallelujahs. We offer our hands and feet and voices to take the celebration out of this place into a world that needs hope so desperately. Help us to live simply, generously, and courageously that all lives may point to you. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. The first of our three readings this morning begins with Psalm chapter 18, verses 14 through 24. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. Glad songs of salvation are in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. The right hand of the Lord exalts. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. I shall not die, but I shall live and recount the deeds of the Lord. The Lord has disciplined me severely, but he has not given me over to death. Open to me the gates of righteousness that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We move to Acts chapter 10, verses 34 to 43. So Peter opened his mouth and said, Truly, I understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. As for the word that he sent to Israel, preaching good news of peace through Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. You yourselves know what happened throughout all Judea, beginning from Galilee, after the baptism that John proclaimed. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. He went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. 
And we are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and made him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who had been chosen by God as witnesses, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one appointed by God to be judge of the living and the dead. To him, all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. This is the word of the Lord. And 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 19 through 26. If in Christ we have hoped, in this life only, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For as by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. But each in his own order, Christ the first fruits, then at his coming, those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end when he delivers the kingdom to God the Father after destroying every rule and every authority and every power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. This is the word of the Lord. Please turn as you are able for the reading of the Holy Gospel according to St. John chapter 20, verses 1 through 18. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place in by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed, for as yet, they did not understand the scripture, but he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary, weeping outside the tomb, as she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she, sat, when she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabunai, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I'm ascending to my Father and your Father, 
to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and she, and she told them that she had said these things, that he had said these things to her. This is the gospel of Christ. seated. Let us pray. Lord, speak to me that I may speak. Open our ears, our minds, and our hearts to receive your word. Holy Spirit, illumine us. Amen. Christ is risen, hallelujah. Christ is risen indeed. He is not here, declared Mary, 
for he is risen as he said. Children of God, with these words, we begin not only a new day, but we also begin a new life of resurrection with Jesus Christ. The story of Easter has been told and retold many times over, and we have heard it, read it, preached about it, put it to music, and seen it dramatized. It is the story that never grows old. And today we celebrate the high point of the Christian faith, the resurrection of our Lord. The path to the resurrection led to the valley of Gethsemane up to the rugged hill of Calvary. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. So on Easter morning came a triumphant swell across the gloomy valley of our spirits. It is obvious that the significance of the empty tomb was not immediately apparent to the first eyewitnesses. John tells us that Mary Magdalene was the first to the tomb to find it empty. She immediately concluded that the enemies of Jesus were not satisfied merely in killing him and had gone further to inflict grief by removing his body. She could not bear it alone. So she ran to tell Peter and John the news of the resurrection. The fear and the agony of Good Friday have settled, have they have been settled once and for all. The claim we make and the claim that God makes to us and the world is that even the most horrific the most final and ultimate reality of all, death has been overthrown by God's love. Even death has been caught up in God's sway. Thus new opportunities have emerged. May we look to it with hope and promise. Death. O oh death, where is your victory this morning? Where is your sting? Though inevitably our bodies die and we cease to breathe that once inflated our lungs cease, there is life beyond this place and beyond this earth. And even when our hearts break in the absence of those we love and those who have loved us, we weep, not as those who have no hope, but as those, as those who have every hope. As much as we are familiar with these words, it still takes something for us to believe, doesn't it? To believe and live into it the mystery and wonder of it all. Our world is full of stories that make us feel anxious and defeated, judged and confused, angry and afraid. We are bombarded by these events and reports of them from all types of news media reports, from associates and friends and family all the time, every single day. At times, we feel that we are totally surrounded by darkness and cannot comprehend what life is all about. Living these dark moments of life is quite unpleasant, 
But today, the love of God through Christ Jesus is challenging us now to share in the resurrection experience. Our response to that love involves a commitment to Christ and therefore to demonstrate in our lives the love. Nothing at all can separate us from God's love. Not death, no life, no angels, no rulers, no things present, no things to come, no powers, no height, no depth, no anything else in all creation. For God has spoken through God's Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives in our heart. Today, we say that love is the supreme way. And all can be raised up if we dare to love enough. We all can be raised up if we lay down our weapons, all the things that are disruptive and destructive. We all can be raised up if we learn to forgive and to look at one another and see one another for who we are. When we look into the eyes of the stranger and extend the message of peace and civility and our common humanity, they too can be raised up. I'm sure of it. I'm encouraging you to continue or to try, to, to, to give it a try. Just try loving someone or something more than life itself truly loving them. Not in the ways you want to love them, but in the ways that they need to be loved. In the ways that look beyond their faults and shortcomings and see their needs. That's how God loves us. On Easter morning of April 21, 1957, Martin Luther King Jr. in his sermon entitled The Questions That Easter Answers puts it this way. I want to reach out to you and tell you this morning that there is one morally established principle for you that is the basic and underlying principle of the universe that is the most durable power in the world. Do you know what that is? It's the power of love. Easter tells us that. Sometimes it looks like the other powers are much more durable. Then we come to see that it isn't true. The most durable, lasting power in this world is the power to love. And my friends, it seems to me that history tells us that. History is a running commentary of it. We have seen the forces of military power hold the throne for a while, haven't we? And it looked like this was the most durable power in the world. It seemed that might made right. It seemed that somehow the more guns and the more ammunition you could get, the greater the power was, the greater the durability of it. Then at every point in history, we have been able to see that this kind of power passes away. This is the Easter message. This is the question that it answers. It says to us that love is the most durable power in the world, for it is love that took Jesus Christ to the cross of Calvary." End of quote. This affirmation of love by Dr. King speaks volumes and still speaks to us now. I believe that love will endure, my friends, and must endure. Despite darkness, turmoil, death, terror, fear, grief, in solitude alone, or with strangers, family, or friends. Not only 
seeing the risen Christ, but live that experience. Mary had suffered this tragic loss. She wept because she had lost someone she loved. There is no experience more universal than this. How many parents have lost children to a life of drug addiction, crime, rebellion, and otherwise? How many young people have lost friends who were senselessly gone down on their main streets? How many husbands and wives have lost their partners through divorce or death uh, and have all suffered the loss of a, one, of, of, of a loved one, someone or another, to death? Like Mary, we stood before our empty tombs and we wept, unable to move on, praying that the long night of sorrow will pass away. We can be reassured that when we are overwhelmed by our grief, drenched by our tears, standing somewhere in the shadows, we will find Jesus. He comes in those moments of deepest despair, and he speaks our name, and then the sunshine breaks through once more. Indeed, there is no darkness that Easter cannot penetrate. No despair that will not submit to the power of the risen Lord. When Mary, facing the empty tomb, and that Jesus called her name, the darkness lifted, and the emptiness of her soul was filled with unspeakable joy and full of glory. She cried, Rabboni. Friends, May we experience and embrace the power of love through the resurrection, in the resurrection of our Lord. May we find our voices for the world needs our witness. Today, we remember what Christ has done for us. May we press forward and live out of faith in the day-to-day -day realities of our life and world. Through all the twists and turns of life, resurrection is a real and present reality right here, right now. May we experience life, power, salvation, and victory and embrace the grace and experience of our own resurrection. As Christ is raised, so are we. Jesus Christ is King, King of kings and Lord of lords, and he shall reign forever and ever and ever. Hallelujah. Amen.
seated. I think my friend Pastor Chris has realized that even though pastors retire, we still have a heart to serve. And so when she invited me to participate this morning through the pastoral prayer, I was happy to say yes. And as I was driving in this morning, like many of you, I was driving through the fog. And as I considered that, I thought, you know, it, it must have been somewhat like this on that first Easter. Oh, perhaps not actual fog uh, in, the, in the arid, dry land of, of Israel, but the fog of fear, the fog of confusion, the fog that comes when we lose something or someone that we love. So those first disciples had to have been in a kind of fog that morning. They were still grieving everything that had happened on that Good Friday. And I think so often we're so anxious to get through Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday and get to Easter Sunday that we tend to gloss over the fact that those disciples were still heartbroken. They were grieving. They didn't understand what was going to happen next. And so today, I, I hope that maybe in some small way we can recapture what that must have felt like for them so that we too can engage in the true celebration that is Resurrection Sunday. That indeed we might find that as we move into this next year with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that it will be truly a year of new beginnings when we can trust in his goodness and certainly trust in the love and share the love that Pastor Chris just spoke about. And as we come to this time of prayer, I know there are many prayer concerns on our hearts. We certainly want to remember to lift up our dear friend, uh, Lisa, who uh, is now uh, in hospice care, and so we want to surround Lisa Velker and her family in, in prayer. We certainly want to continue to remember uh, the many in our congregations and in our lives that are experiencing the sorrow of loss and continuing to move through that time of grief. Let us go to our God in prayer. Lord of Resurrection, we have come to offer our shouts of praise and joy for your victory over death, your victory over our sin, your victory over evil. Over the news of our daily lives, you startle us again with your resurrection life that brings grace, hope, and joy. Forgive us when we resist your call to be Easter people who proclaim your hope to others. Forgive us, Lord, for all those things which we have neglected to do that would have helped someone else to be closer to you. Let us live into the message of love that we've just heard so that indeed we might draw others closer to you. Heal our hearts from the wounds which have been inflicted upon us by the anger and misunderstandings which occur in relationships. Lead us forward through your resurrection power. Thank you, Lord, for the many blessings in our lives the blessings of love and laughter, food and shelter, safety and hope. We trust in your all-sustaining presence as we lift to you the concerns of our lives this day. Those who are in need of your healing love and comfort, especially in this moment we, we think of Lisa and her family and ask your presence with her through this season. For all those who are struggling with physical, emotional, and spiritual challenges, we lift them to you. Those depressed or lonely, those struggling with uncertainty or doubt, those of this faith community and beyond that are grieving as they mourn the passing of a loved one. We lift to you those impacted by natural disasters. For our sisters and brothers in this nation, those intimately impacted by the death and destruction of the bridge in Maryland. For our brothers and sisters around the world, the countless children, women, and men caught in circumstances beyond their control, with violence the reality of their everyday experiences, 
leading to the ramifications of that violence that has far too many hungry, homeless, and hoping for relief. We seek your abiding presence and we seek your guidance for how best to be your hands and feet in these situations. The persons and places in need of your healing and hope are many. Lord, in your mercy, we lift to you your beloved children in Haiti, Gaza, Israel, Ukraine, Russia, those seeking to simply live their lives in a place of safety for their families. We seek for all leaders, our own and those around the world, to actively engage in ways that lead to your way of peace. Through the power of your Holy Spirit, may we open our hearts, minds, and spirits to you so that we may more fully live into the power of your resurrection in our lives. May each of us be open to you and your risen power. May we allow your power to shape all our days as we offer all praise, honor, and glory to you. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, our risen Lord, we ask it as we lift to you the words he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And to lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I'd like to thank Pastor Joan and all who have served and worked with me. And um, I'd like to say that I'm happy to see Terry and Melody in church with us this morning, and I also see Isla, and so many of you have members of your family with, with you all for this Easter celebration. And I do have some with me here today as well. Thank you. Uh, may we conclude our service by um, saying together the solemn blessings of the resurrection. Shall we stand as you are able? May Almighty God bless you on this solemn feast of the resurrection and may God protect you against all sin. Through the resurrection of God's Son, God granted us healing. May God fulfill God's promises and bless you with eternal life. Amen. You have mourned for Christ's sufferings. Now you celebrate the joy of his resurrection. May you come with joy to the feast which lasts forever. May Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the risen Lord. Thanks be to God.
Thou, may the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with everything good for doing his will, and may he work in us what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Go in peace and feel the presence of the risen Lord with you now and always. Amen.